Glad you made it back, everybody. Uh, attorneys for former President Donald J. Trump have accepted a subpoena issued by the sham January 6th committee. The panel voted unanimously to subpoena Trump to testify either at the Capitol or by video conference on November 14th. The Trump team can still fight this subpoena in court in a legal battle that would likely outlast the Democrat-run sham committee. Joining me now to weigh in is former special assistant to President Trump, commentary editor for The Washington Times and Newsmax contributor Kelly Sadler. Uh, Kelly, great to see you. Uh, the Democrats are, are desperate to make the midterms yeah. about anything except for their grotesque performance in office. What is your sense? Is anyone but CNN and MSNBS <laughs> and their hosts falling for any of this? Well, I think a lot of the Sunday shows are as well, Chris. I mean, if you just watched ABC this week, uh, on Sunday of this past week, uh, they focused pretty much the entire show on, on the January 6th and interviewing Liz Cheney, who is irrelevant, right? She is no longer going to be a congresswoman from Wyoming. She might become an MSNBC or ABC News contributor, uh, but she certainly won't be at play here in Washington, D.C. This is a sham committee. If they had anything on Donald Trump, they would have subpoenaed him over the course of this year. Why now? Why the desperation? They just want, they know that Donald Trump is the head of the Republican Party, that he's going to be running for president, most likely in 2024, and they want to knock him out. And I mean, that's the, that's the only goal of this committee. Plus, they wanted to wait until it, it would do maximum damage to the Republicans, if any, but nobody's paying attention. No so they waited attention. till now, right before the election, to subpoena him. And that's how everybody in America knows that Liz Cheney uh, the, the Democrat enabler is doing this all for politics. Uh, meantime, former Vice President Mike Pence was asked if he'd back President Trump in 2024. Here's what he said. Well, there might be somebody else I'd prefer more. I have every confidence that the Republican Party is going to sort out leadership. All my focus has been on the midterm elections, and it'll stay that way for the next 20 days. But after that, we'll be thinking about the future, ours and the nation's, and... Uh, I'll keep you posted. What's your reaction to that, Kelly? Oh, well, there's no doubt that Mike Pence is going to run for president in 2024, and he will challenge Donald Trump. He's been setting the groundwork um, all week long. He was at the Heritage Foundation, gave a speech, warned against Putin apologists um, and, you know, growing concern among some of the populists in the Republican Party. So he's trying to put a wedge between him and the former president. And I say good luck because in poll after poll, he comes out at the bottom of people of what the GOP wants in a president. You know, you always see, you always see President Trump at the top, followed closely by Ron DeSantis. And Tul Tulsi Gabbard actually right, was making well, a move there a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not a good look, uh, Vice President Pence, when Tulsi Gabbard, a former Democrat, <laughs> is polling better than you are in Republican yeah. circles. Uh, while our borders are wide open and inflation is at record levels, failed borders are. Kamala Harris, she's focusing on clean energy school buses. Here she is giving story time on taxpayer dollars. Watch. Can you raise your hand if you love a yellow school bus, right? Just, there's something about the, and, and most of us, many of us went to school on the yellow school bus, right? And it's part of, it's part of our, our experience growing up. Yeah, <laughs> Kelly, yellow school buses, really? Yeah, no, I thought she was going to break into a song, you know, the wheels on the bus go round and round. I mean, Kamala Harris <laughs> is not on the campaign trail for a reason. She is completely nonsensical. Every time she gets up to speak, she <sighs> speaks in circles. She's more like the Veep, the HBO's Veep, Selena Myers. Uh, she is nowhere on the campaign trail. No one wants her around. She's polling lower than Joe Biden, if that's actually possible. And it's because of moments like these. Yeah, you know, I hope I hope some conservative restaurateur somewhere says uh, changes the name of a of a salad on their menu to the Kamala Harris word salad. <laughs> I think yeah. that'd be that'd be I would sell like hotcakes. Uh, it, it, it's uh, it's not just the majority of Americans who find Mr. Biden and his Democrats unfit for office. New report from the Wall Street Journal revealing that the Saudi Crown Prince is now mocking Mr. Biden in in private and questioning his mental acuity. Isn't it time that we all stop pretending that the diminished yeah. capacity of left-wing politicians like Biden and Fetterman is, is normal for people who hold these consequential offices?
Yeah, I mean, our mainstream media likes to ignore it and gloss over the fact and allow Joe Biden to campaign from his basement, um, much like they're doing with John Fetterman, you know, making excuses for him. All of the campaign reporters on John Fetterman's campaign knew that he was impaired, but kept that. They hid that from the public. But it's for anyone who sees with their own eyes and listens with their own ears, it's blatantly obvious, including all these foreign leaders. And that's why it's dangerous. Do you think Vladimir Putin respects Biden? Do you think, um, you know, uh, Xi in China respects, you know, respects Biden? No, they absolutely see his fumbles for what they are. Um, and that's a cognitive mental decline. I don't know if anybody would be ordering that Kamala Harris word salad, you know, lots of roughage, I guess. Uh, Kelly Sadler, <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate the time. As always.